high school sports fans. Are you following Varsity Media on our YouTube channel? For the best coverage of New York high school sports, make sure you head to youtube.com slash varsity media. Three easy steps. First, hit that like button, and then be sure to subscribe. And finally, tap that yellow bell to be notified of all of our upcoming sportscasts. Thank you for following Varsity Media on YouTube. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. From the Raven's Nest in the Castle Hill section of the Bronx. It's a good one in the Catholic High School League this afternoon. St. Francis Prep makes the trip across the Throgs Neck Bridge and they'll take on Ty Turnage and the Ravens here. A late regular season showdown on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Well, a pleasant good afternoon, everyone. We welcome you courtside here at St. Raymond's, Dylan Butler, alongside John Perez uh, for a late season, regular season showdown between two elite teams in the Catholic League. Look, uh, based on Stepanak's, what, 30-plus point win over Christ the King, fair to say, certainly, Pat Maceroni's guys are the favorite. Um, but there's a, a group of guys just behind them. Uh, these two teams are right there. St. Francis Prep is a team that still searching for their signature win. And they've got some big games ahead with Nazareth, a, a rivalry game against Holy Cross, and of course, stepping back to end the regular season. But listen, no time like the present to take on a red-hot Ravens team. Yeah, and for Jimmy Lynch, he has to look at this as one game at a time. Yes, they don't have that signature win, but that doesn't mean that they can't start to reel them off. And it starts now against a very good St. Ray's team that is in the better division of the two uh, conferences here. Good game against Malloy. Defense was suffocating. We'll talk about that throughout the broadcast. But for a St. Francis Prep team that has the sour taste in their mouth of losing in the BQ final, only getting to the semifinal, it's about getting to the next step. And how do you win those playoff-type atmospheres and uh, overcome those adversities? Well, you've got to win games like today. And so that's a big reason for uh, St. Francis Prep putting themselves in a position, one of the top teams in Brooklyn, Queens. Now they need their signature win, and it's going to have to come from an Archdiocesan team. And St. Francis Prep, as you mentioned, look, we were there a week ago, a double overtime win against St. Peter's, and their head coach, Jimmy Lynch, said, listen, uh, that could have gone either way. So he was happy that that win went his way. And then a rivalry game on a Friday night. They take care of business against Archbishop Malloy, but it's a different beast that they're playing uh, here tonight in St. Raymond's. Uh, and, and listen, you know, we'll, we'll eventually get to the keys, but uh, really, we asked the coaches for three keys. Really, it's going to be about one key, about what speed this game will be played at is it going to be you know bumper to bumper on the cross bronx expressway on, on a thursday at three in the afternoon that works for st francis prep will it be 100 miles an hour uh that will work for st raymond so um it's a clash of styles and and that should make for a fun one let's take a look at the impact players john for st francis prep and it starts of course uh, in the backcourt for your anthony who might as well be a senior at this point and Tyler Michelle, very much a senior leader. Yeah, and Tyler Michelle, the hero of last week's win over St. Peter's. He had the shot, uh, three-pointer that put St. Francis Prep over the hump. Uh, it's good to have players like Michelle uh, as well as Osman Asako and the rest of the crew because when you've got those type of pieces, it just makes Vera Anthony look that much better. He facilitates the ball well. Uh, you see the five assists per game. That's not easy stat to have when you're only playing 32 minutes in these four quarters. And with that said, he's able to drop some dimes, get everyone in the right spot. And, of course, when you got guys like Michelle knocking it down, that's why that St. Francis prep win 
although not a signature win, a defining win for the season, showing that they were able to go through adversity, get over the hump, knock off St. Peter's, and set themselves up for Malloy and St. Ray's this weekend. Yeah, Michelle hit that big corner three in overtime to really uh, get the Terriers that home win. Uh, St. Raymond's is a team that's coming off a rivalry win of their own over Cardinal Hayes, and what a win that was here on Friday afternoon. Uh, they did get up and down, as Cardinal Hayes likes to do as well. Um, but in that one, uh, they had a special, special performance uh, from Kamari White. Dropped 48 points, one of the all-time best individual scoring efforts in school history. Uh, don't know if he's going to do the same here uh, this afternoon. Um, but listen, uh, if, if they can get big-time performances and, again, get the pace going, uh, the Ravens, their only two league losses to Archbishop Stepanak this year. Yeah, and when it comes to Kamari White, if he's the only one scoring and he does score the program record 56 points, well, that equates to a St. Francis prep win yeah. because they want to keep it in the 50s. Good display of emotion for White in that uh, victory because he was able to keep himself uh, in the rhythm and the flow of the offense, which was good to see for St. Ray's. And, of course, we know what they're going to get out of their top two players as well. Let's take a look at those players you just mentioned, our impact players, as they have been really all year. Brandon Stores uh, could be in the argument. Listen, Boogie Flanders is a favorite for it, but he could be in the argument for a player of the year the way that he's performing. And what a tough matchup he is for anybody kind of like a Dwayne Pierce kind of guy a thicker body can back his uh, a smaller guy down into the paint gets his rebounds as you see seven a game and also scores the ball uh, almost unlike anyone else in this league yeah he does so many things well and he's down to his final three schools commitment wise which is good to see as well he's playing inspired basketball when you've got a guy like Turnage similar to Vera Anthony who can distribute uh, it's not just stores who benefits and white it's the rest of the crew as well let's look at the keys to the game and John uh, we mentioned it uh, before. Obviously, the pace will be vital for both of these teams. Yeah, so when it comes to St. Francis Prep, limit stores where he catches the ball. That was a big deal last week with Kadir Martin in St. Peter's. Uh, if St. Francis Prep uh, and the scouting report is to uh, stores to keep them away from the basket, don't let them back down your defenders, they're going to be pretty good. Same thing with St. Francis Prep. They don't want to get this game into the 90s. That only helps St. Raymond, who wants to speed up the game. And respectively, Sacco got to keep them off the glass and not dominate the boards. We'll take a look now at our officials for this one. There you see the three-man crew of Richard Katz, Steve Salustio, and Matthew Rubin. Improve your officiating with Crown Refs, the ultimate resource for basketball officials. Explore their podcasts and daily videos on all social platforms and join the Crown Ref community. Simply go to patreon.com slash crown refs. Serve the game. A good one here in the Bronx, St. Francis Prep, St. Raymond's. Tip-off when we return right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. My name is Grant Vermeer, a member of the Crown Refs community. My first year as a high school official, that's when I found out about the Crown Refs community. Having my military background, I love being a part of teams. I want to be a part of a group that has high standards, that holds each other accountable, but also supports and loves each other, and has a desire for everyone in the group to grow. If you're a young referee or someone who loves refereeing and wants to be a part of a group, this is an amazing community for you. I feel like I've gotten better as an official. I've had a community and friends and support through this process, which can otherwise be a little bit lonely as you're on the road a lot. The culture is amazing in here. Make sure Come check it out. Brian Harrington is the owner and head performance coach of Harrington Sports Performance and Transform Fitness and Recovery located in Tuckahoe, New York. Currently, Brian and his team have been contracted by multiple schools and for over the past 15 years to provide high-level strength and conditioning and performance training to their athletes. Brian works with basketball players from NYC's highest level talent down to the grassroots level. You can message him on his social media at Harrington underscore performance and use promo code HSP1 in the message details for a discount on an initial evaluation. 
And we welcome you back to the Ravens Nest. Dylan Butler, John Perez, our entire varsity media crew here for this one. Sunday afternoon showdown late regular season as St. Francis Prep and St. Raymond's both with a lot to play for, John, at this point. Certainly probably more St. Francis than St. Raymond's, if you will, because I think St. Raymond's has pretty much solidified the number two spot in the Archdiocese and playoffs. St. Francis Prep is in a wild battle right now. Nazareth, Christ the King, and they all among the top three seeds. Yeah, and as we take a look at the standings, you're right, and that's uh, how about Nazareth? We always knew what they could do at a lower level. Now they're really turning some heads at the higher level. They've always had the talent. It was always about um, what class they should be in. Well, they're showing that they're the class of Brooklyn Queens this year. And uh, Christ the King, the defending champs, of course, she have to go through Christ the King regardless of any type of year that they're having. Uh, but for St. Francis Prep, yeah, you want to keep pace uh, with both King and Nazareth. Let's take a look at the starting lineups brought to you by Maspeth Federal Savings. First, for the visitors, from St. Francis Prep. Nolan Raymond gets his second consecutive start. The senior in his first varsity start. What a performance he had against Archbishop Malloy. 15 points, five steals in that home win. He was just good up and down the floor. Did a really good job against St. Peter's. Parlayed it against Malloy. And now Jimmy Lynch has another cog he can throw in his starting five. He does. St. Francis Prep 14 and 6, 9 and 3 on the season. Let's take a look now at the starting five for St. Ray's. Brought to you by Maspeth Federal. And it's the same starting five we saw here against Archbishop Stepanak about a month or so ago. Ty Turnage, the freshman sensation, Anderson Diaz. There's Brandon Stores, And the aforementioned Kamari White. Listen, you put yourself in the, in the stratosphere of an Isaiah Washington as a Kareem Reed. You know you've done something special. And he's done it as a sophomore as well. It's great to have those individual performances for White. I'm interested to see how he comes out of the gate over the first two minutes. And he's a sophomore. George Lopez says that he's pretty even keel, so um, that's what he's got in his side. But it's always different when the lights are on, the ball is tipped, and now you're going on the floor. And again, this is a, a matchup of uh, two teams. St. Ray's 16-3 and three overall, 8-2 and two in the league. We mentioned in the open, there are only two league losses to Archbishop Stepanak. No Shame in that, certainly. Um, St. Francis Prep, three league losses, two of those to Christ the King, the other Nazareth at home. So uh, both of these teams have shown through what is a slog of a regular season uh, to be in that upper echelon of the Catholic League this year. Yeah, 100%. And that's we kind of do this both coming in to this year that both of these teams would have the talent to do so and to compete. They're always in games. Sometimes uh, it doesn't go your way. It's funny, uh, the game of basketball. You have a St. Ray's team that after opening night or opening night on Varsity Media, we thought was hanging with Stepanak, and then Stepanak blows the doors off of them. So you just never know, but it just shows the talent disparity here. Opening tip-off is battled for, and it's Turnage who comes away. Veer Anthony very much behind him. We expect these Ravens to move quickly. And one of the keys that we showed you was Jimmy Lynch saying, how do we stop their second and third options? George Lopez so good at having multiple sets other than just the original one. Well, one way to stop him is have Troy Faison come uh, and close out the window, get the first block of the afternoon. He gets the handoff, and Faison got a lot of love from George Lopez, and his ability to play on the ball has allowed Vier Anthony to play off of it, Nolan Raymond's three off the mark. And there's Brandon Stores. Pulls up just inside the three-point arc and buries his first jumper. Good job in transition. He's about 20 pounds lighter this year, and that's uh, he's used the, the weight lost into his stats. He's averaging 20 points per game, and it's because he could pull up from the mid-range. Among the leaders in the Catholic League in that statistic, Sacco's three off the mark. Rebound chased down by Raymond. Goes across the court. Faison's there for the corner three and knocks it down. That's the one thing about St. Francis Prep. They're a fundamental team. They always find the open man. It's just a matter of making shots. A lot of contact. No foul. Stores had a quizzical look for Steve Salustio. As Faison, the scoop layup. Bounces twice. No good. Now the Ravens will look to run. Pull up. Foul line. Jumper. White. No good. And the foul called against Stores. Yeah, a little double whammy against Stores uh, on the other end. Doesn't get back on defense and then commits the foul. It's something where you got to, um, you know, either just let the layup happen or make sure that you're hitting the ball and not the uh, 
player. Ravens picking up full court, it looks like. And you got to figure, too, on the defensive side, how can they speed up St. Francis prep, right? And, and part of that is by picking up full court maybe and doing some maybe three-quarter traps and things of that nature. That's how the best teams do it. and That's a good point, Dylan. And I'd imagine that St. Ray's is going to employ that press a lot this afternoon. Faison! His second triple of this first quarter. Just unfazed by that shot, open look, and that's another element that he's added to his game over the offseason. Oh, I see what he did there. On Be here all day. <laughs> Tip your waitresses. Man-to-man -man defense employed by St. Francis Prep. White open for three. Back rim, no good. Battle for the loose ball. Into your living room almost came Tyler Michelle. Now it's the Terriers on the break. Off the backboard, Veer Anthony. Not sure if he was trying to shoot the ball or find Sacco. Neither worked, but Turnage gets to the cup. Yeah, Veer Anthony a little gimpy afterwards, too, and still going through it. Not sure if he had his foot stepped on or what it was, but, yeah, wild shot. That's not a normal Anthony layup. I'll tell you, I'll tell you the way that he plays basketball, you would think he plays football as well because he's so physical. Here is Sacco, another three attempt off the mark. And you got to think through the course of a season, you know, things catch up to you and you get banged up. Oh, 100% as Diaz gets the bucket there. And it's funny because Faison's that guy. Yeah. Uh, it plays football and they're tough guys. They're, they're very well conditioned. But you're right. You still have to deal with the bumps and bruises through a long regular season. I love this matchup as well. Vera Anthony and Ty Turnage. Two of the better point guards in a league that has seen a lot of them. Nolan Raymond's three off the mark, and now the Ravens will look to run. It is Anderson Diaz. Turnage for three off the mark. Raymond's the rebound, and he'll look to push the pace. Bounce pass to Faison. Turns the lane. Faison's got eight. Timeout called. It's a 30, so we'll keep it here. 30-second timeout called by St. Francis Prep. This winter, Varsity Media is proud to announce our partnership with Gipper, the number one social media content creation platform for athletic programs. Thousands of the best social media sports graphic templates, social media automation, AI-powered one-click background removal, mobile app for easy content creation on the go. To learn more, visit www.gipper.com. Faison is red hot early on. Yeah, Brandon Stores does it continue defending, and then uh, nobody goes up after the ball either with White and Turnage, so an easy two points for Mr. Faison, who has uh, been the sole Terrier offense. And he's at his season average now, so <laughs> it's only it's all up from here for Troy Faison, the sophomore from Springfield Gardens. And we've seen enough of... Jimmy Lynch's game to so know this is that the time that he calls a timeout. Whether he's winning, losing, midway through the first quarter, likes to get a quick reset into his team, and they get a stop here as well. Nolan Raymond goes ahead to Tyler Michelle. Good defense from behind by Anderson to affect that layup. Now Anderson behind the back. He'll look to push into the lane. Veer Anthony saved it. And Sacco goes the other way. A little herky-jerky offense for St. Ray's, and and trying to push the paint, you make a tough pass. Sacco, the fake, made sure that he got rid of the double, and then he gets his own putback. Good job by Sacco to stay with the play. St. Ray's doesn't box out, and an easy deuce for the Terriers. Stores guarded by Michelle. Here's Turnage quickly ahead to Stores. Nice look down low, and Turnage gets the reverse layup on the baseline. He's just so effortless, Turnage. Uh, you know, he's a junior, and it's crazy to think that uh, he's only a junior considering how long he's been up on the varsity level, but just makes it look too easy and runs well without the ball in his hands. Saw Dad Billy before wearing two hats today. Knocked down three by Raymond. Billy Turnage, the head coach at Holy Cross, so he's scouting. He's got St. Francis prep later this week, and, of course, he's also Dad as well to watch Ty play. Doesn't get that opportunity much anymore because obviously he's coaching in the league and the game is at the same time. He just watched Ty get to the basket again. No. Six for Turnage. 
No, you're right. In a rare off day as Anthony will go up for the hoop and Sacco can't finish it in. We get a foul. Um, no, it, it's good to see, too. And I think it's good for the league, too. And what's also good for the league is Ty gets to develop his game and he can worry about himself. Uh, and Billy doesn't have that added pressure of coaching his son and then obviously he's going to be invested in his development. But then how does that translate to the rest of his team and the rest of Holy Cross? He's able to just relax as a fan. He doesn't play them yet so far. Um, and he can kind of kick back and relax. Yeah, George Lopez relaxing on that as well. Did not want any part of having that turnage connection <laughs> uh, this season. The, the schedule isn't a balanced one this year. So you, because of Nazareth's insertion into the AA, uh, you, you don't have a, a you, you don't play certain teams. For George Lopez, thankfully, that's Holy Cross. And look at Nolan Raymond picking up where he left off Friday night. He's got five already and a foul called on Michelle on the baseline. I feel like I preach this every game, especially in games that could be blowouts, but uh, you look at Nolan Raymond, a guy that was getting good minutes off the bench, but playing well in his time that he was on the floor, um, and now he's parlayed that into a starting role. No time like a Sunday to preach, John Perez. Here's Vera Anthony driving, knocked away again by Diaz. Quick outlet as the Ravens look to push. Stores for three, front rim. Loose ball, pulled down by the big man, and Colin Pang was fouled. Fouls on Veer Anthony, his first. Love Pang's size, somebody who's really coming into his own, a good rebounder, and now a timeout taken. It will be a 30, so we will keep it here with 140 left in this first quarter. These two teams met last year, a game that we had on the Varsity Media Sports Network and a game that uh, very much went the way of the Terriers. Big win at home for St. Francis Prep. In that one, Terriers winning that one 77 to 63. And like we've mentioned a lot of times in like the last matchup kind of a things we mentioned in these broadcasts, Josh Pascarelli, no surprise there, uh, had himself a game against the Ravens. And of course, ended up being the player of the year in the Catholic League, went on to Marist College, uh, where he's a starter now as a freshman. No, good to see him getting positive minutes. And how about the program that Jimmy Lynch has built? Uh, I think reigning last two players of the year, right? In the I was No, I was corrected on that. And okay. uh, I, of course, I should have known, but it was Tobey Awaka the year before. Right. Uh, who was the player of the year and the Gatorade player of the year, and now he's doing his thing at Tennessee. Raymond, the rebound, and here comes Faison looking to push. Terriers with an early seven-point lead on the road in the Bronx. Beer Anthony drives, stripped from behind, and again, Anderson Diaz. Third big defensive play we've seen him make. Terriers get it right back, though, and Michelle gets to the basket. That's what St. Francis Prep does so well. You know what's really funny, Dylan, is that um, – one of the keys to the game was for St. Francis Prep to slow it down. Yeah. They look like the faster team. Yeah, 19 first quarter points. That's not – listen, Jimmy Lynch is a math guy. That's not usually in his favor. The big man, Pong. And Colin Pang fouled. Yeah, it's just tough to box out a guy like Pang. He's got a lot of size down low, good base. Uh, and now we'll head to the free throw line. A six eight junior has come into his own this year, and the improvement that he's made, in addition to being a great rebounder, is he's now shown the ability to also defend on the perimeter. No, and certainly with teams uh, unleashing their offense from downtown, that's going to be huge. Is yeah, just too much size for Pang, and as he gets older, he'll finish those. And Jimmy Lynch, of course, understanding that Pang is in the game, brings Sacco back in as well. Sacco's going to have to deal with Najai Bess, who is almost his size as well. Knocks down both free throws. Final minute of this first quarter, and St. Francis Prep with a seven point lead. Here's Veer Anthony. 
Kicks it. Ethan Butler on the baseline. Out to Sacco. Another attempt from beyond the arc, and this one he buries. Yeah, see, that's the thing. If you give Sacco some space, there was a little hesitation there, but he'll hoist and he's really developed a three-point shot over the last year. Seven for Sacco. Baseline cut off by the big man. It's only two seconds, Dylan. Last second shot, front rim, no good. Contact, but also no foul. What a start for the guys from Fresh Meadow. St. Francis prepped 22 first quarter points. They've got a 10-point lead. You're watching it all right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. This is Jalen Brunson. You're watching Varsity Media. Looking to grow your business on social media? Let Varsity Media help you. With over 50,000 followers across our platform, sponsor a segment during the broadcast and share it on social media the next day. It's the best of both worlds as you'll get thousands of plays and your ad will live on the broadcast forever. Contact us today for sponsorship packages by calling 917-470-0864 or emailing varsitymediasponsors at gmail.com. Welcome back to the Raven's Nest here in the Castle Hill section of the Bronx. Dylan Butler, John Perez with you inside that huddle. George Lopez in his 12th season as head coach at St. Ray's. Sacred Heart 1992 graduate, 176 career wins. That means, John Perez, he's within 10 of Oliver Antigua, who's in the building, of course, also joining us on some broadcasts. And he was Oliver's assistant coach. And then when... Oliver went the college route. George took the program over. Yeah, Oliver, right next to our cameraman, Travis DeLuise, on the other side. And uh, what a contribution Oliver has uh, made to the Catholic League as well and St. Raymond's and uh, a luminary here in uh, Castle Hill. Sacco goes up and inside. Nothing there. And here come the Ravens looking to run. Kamari White, there is contact. And there is a foul. This one on Ethan Butler, his first. Love the aggressiveness by St. Ray's. Um, scouting report, obviously they want to speed up the game and attack the basket as much as they can. I want to see those adjustments, but I think for St. Ray's in the second uh, quarter as well, got to box out and defend. Too many times uh, they're staring at each other after a rebound, and that allows St. Francis Prep to cash in. Mari White on the line, dropped 48 points on Cardinal Hayes. Ten of those from beyond the arc. And you wonder, right, like where is that in St. Raymond's history? Well, you remember Jelly Roll, of course, <laughs> Isaiah Washington. Jelly Fam, let me fam, stop My there. bad, my bad. Jelly Roll is actually a, after you. A, a country guy. Oh, look at a block, Colin Pong. We go the other way. White spins, nice move into the trees and the finish. And Kam Kamari White may be heating up. But yes, Jelly Fam fame as there's a foul called. It's going to be. I love the acrobatic. Cisse. But so Isaiah Washington dropped 50 plus in two games 58 against Hayes, 51 against Stepanak as Butler gets to the hole and to the line as the foul called against Pang, his first. But those were losses. And then, of course, Kareem Reed, one of the greatest guards to play here at St. Ray's. Uh, he had himself a game back in the day as well, and he had the original record for single uh, game points as the first free throw is knocked down. Uh, that one was 46. He was in the building on Friday night. Uh, to watch White do his thing. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool, too. After the game, George Lopez telling his team um, and congratulating White. He said, you know, so many times, and he applauded Brandon Storrs as well. He goes, uh, Brandon Storrs has been the big reason why we've always um, come out ahead of we, uh, we've been and always relying on him. And he commended White and said, it's good to see others step up uh, as well and wants to build that and called the rest of his team. Uh, besides Storrs and Turnage to take it to the next level. And uh, Lopez really knows his team that well, and maybe that message will resonate with players not named Storrs or Turnage. By the way, the reason I said Jelly Roll is just it's, it's the, the finger 
tip roll right at the rim that is the play that uh, he made famous and continues <laughs> to make famous as well. It's him, Javon Quinterly. Um, Here's Javon White. Quinterly might still have eligibility. He's been in college for nine years. He's a real Van Wilder. And really, Jelly fan, that kind of started this whole social media phenomenal, pheno phenomenon uh, that continues today. Is you know, most nights here in the Catholic League, we see a lot of social media people as Richie Katz calls the goaltending call. Nigel Moore will get two. There's nothing like a Katz game uh, as well, which is good to see. Love the. Uh, emphasis there as well, but how about St. Francis Prep just taking it to the hole against St. Ray's? They've been fearless. Richie Katz is a terrific umpire as well, and he is as emphatic calling balls and strikes as well. Three-point shot off the mark. You thought Katz on Broadway was entertainment. You've, you've got to see a Richie Katz officiated game as Cherry gets the put back inside. You know, I've heard he's re related to Enrico Palazzo. <laughs> Michelle. Oh, it took some steps, or was a foul? Foul was called first. Inbound underneath for the Terriers. Here's Sacco. Uses the shoulder, some athleticism, doesn't get the finish. Now White in transition. Good strip from behind. I believe that was Nigel Moore. Nigel Moore, Vera Anthony closing the window, able to poke it away. And that's the one good thing about St. Francis Prep. Yeah, they don't want to. Um, speed up the game, but their transition defense has really impressed me this year, and the way that they're able to get back on defense, uh, no matter how fast the opposing offense is. Here's Turnage. Go to the corner to White. Inside to Stores. Oh, he did a great job getting Sacco up. And then he absorbed the contact, and he'll go to the line. That's a veteran head fake. If we could take another look at that, is um, that's something that you develop over your time, and that's what's going to help him at the next level get to the free throw line, pad those stats as well. Uh, all starts with a head fake and also um, from your legs. It's something that Kobe Bryant would talk about as well. Now let's take a look again. So Stores, watch his head and his leg. There you go. You sell it with your legs as well. That's why Sacco bit. Textbook. And then Smart, too, made sure that shot gets off yep. as well. So... Well, that's why I went to the line, and that lead that was 10 has been whittled away. It's now a five-point game as St. Ray's has slowly but surely gotten themselves back in. Here's Michelle, open, three off the mark, and White gets the rebound. It's ahead to Turnage. Turnage keeps his dribble after blowing a tire. Turnage out to White. Good job by White to attack that basketball because if he didn't, I think Moore was getting a steal instead of a foul. No, 100%. And um, that's another one where St. Francis Prep, a little too aggressive, tried to defend the passing lanes and you bump a Raven. And here's Turnage. Turnage and stores, stores and turnage. It's been this way for three years now, and it's remarkable to think that they're only juniors. Stores turns, gets his own rebound against Sacco. Can't get the finish. Sacco, the rebound, lost it though. White, little floater. Nice soft touch inside. It's a crafty veteran move as well. Love the hustle, but the soft touch is what really does it for me. And Turnage and Stores, they both stayed through some tough times as well. Vera Anthony's three off the mark. Michelle, the rebound. Kick out to Faison, was hot in the first quarter, is not in the second. Turnage into the lane. Good defense by Faison. And I have a bounce pass on that. Michelle 
attacking the rim. Short. Here's Diaz. Look out from behind you. Diaz kicks it out. White drives, and he's fouled on the way up. Foul on Faison. Well, I like that White is attacking the basket. He's got to get himself going. I don't imagine that he's going to score 48 points again today, but you, know, you got to get into a rhythm, start to put some points on the boards, and take a chop at the St. Francis Prep lead, which uh, is now only down to two. Prep's not hitting their shots at the other end. We'll take another look as White, Faison, Gets the assignment. The referee calls a foul. One of two from the line, and the Terriers scored 22 points in the first quarter. And just past the midway point of the second quarter, uh, they've only scored three. Foul on Turnage. We mentioned the tough times last year. It was the first losing season for George Lopez last year. 10 and 16, losing to Bishop Lachlan by 10 in the first round of the playoffs. And it wasn't one of those seasons, John, where you had to like circle the wagons and George Lopez was happy that his guys stuck together, knew it was a process as, as tired a phrase as that is in, in sports these days, but you know, knew his guys believed in themselves and the program and look at their turnaround this year, 16 and three. And that's where you really develop a character and a culture and learn how to respond when things aren't going your way, just through all those losing. White kicked it in the corner. And that's where Eliza Cherry knocked his shot down. Five second quarter points for Cherry and we've got a one point ball game. It always seems to come down to a one point game when it's the winning or leading coach who comes here for the halftime interview. Pass out for Michelle. Back rim, no good. Here's Diaz in transition. Good job by the Terriers to shut off that lane. And you make St. Ray's get into a half court set. Turnage, nice pass down low. And what a job by White. He had to grab that basketball down from his waist in the lane, and in one move, was able to get the bucket. Here's Sacco, the response. Yeah, good job on the other end by St. Francis Prep. They needed to end the drought in the worst way. Um, the evolution for St. Ray's, even though they prefer to go fast, is you still want to have a set offense, even though Turnage will call his own number and get the deuce. Eight for Turnage. And St. Ray's, a moment ago, they took their first lead of the game, and now they've got their second inside the final two minutes of this first half. Anthony Faison, good ball movement. Sacco pops out for another three attempt, no good. And that's a little bit of what Vier Anthony, like it's, it's understated, but again, he knows that the Ravens want to push it, right? So if he just forces it out of bounds, his guys can get back on defense and uh, the Ravens can't do what they like to do in transition. Right, and it's the game within the game and uh, it's little things that point guards can pick up on that can uh, really help your team and get success. Diaz bounces it down low to Stores. He's got the size advantage on Michelle. Goes foul line, jumper, back rim, battle for the loose ball. It goes to Anthony. Veer Anthony drives through defenders, but too hard there off the glass. Sacco tracks, tracks down the rebound. Sacco. He's got the advantage, and he's got the foul. Yeah, not really much that Cherry can do there with Sacco trying to bang down low. You could try and pull the door um, and get Sacco to travel. That's not an easy thing to do either. And Sacco, a player that only gets better when he's bumped. First free throw from Sacco. That is good. You see it again. You take a look. Yeah, see, Sacco's looking for the contact, and then Cherry doesn't play up on him, and Sacco's able to draw the foul. Knocks down his free throws as well. Four for four from the line. And our first look this afternoon at Hal Chen, who has checked into the game, the junior, really heady basketball player for St. Francis Prep. I really liked Chen last year. Um, he's grown 
uh, both physically and emotionally as well. Added a three-point shot to his game, but a very underrated defender for St. Francis Prep. Here's Kamari White. They call him Wolverine. Passes out of the double to Diaz inside the final minute, first half. Diaz, the scoop layup. I was talking to a college coach this weekend, and he was saying that there's so much boogie flan in Diaz's game. Now, he's only a freshman. He's got a lot to grow, but it's high praise. Very, considering <laughs> the guy that he's being uh, considered to be like as a foul was called on Cherry's drive is a McDonald's All-American this year going to Kentucky. Eliza Cherry, the senior, on a team full of a lot of younger players. Front rim, no good. And that's a scary thought, I think, for the rest of the Catholic League, considering how successful the Ravens have been this year that they return almost everybody. You know, I wonder, and obviously we played high school sports, you know how everyone, um, you know, teases the underclassmen and all that. Do you think the underclassmen gang up on the senior <laughs> and he's got to, like I don't know, do a dance like in front of the team? Or, of, or I thought they going to say chance of you're a senior. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. So St. Francis Prep down by two. They can hold for the last. And we potentially have a situation of a tie game. And tie, I would say, goes to the home coach. So hopefully we can get George Lopez as Faison attacks the rim hard. Doesn't get the finish. Look out from behind. Brandon Storrs mid-court heave. Ooh, was close, but doesn't get it to finish as the Ravens have a two-point lead here at the break. Well, it was a good job by St. Ray's to come back, make adjustments in the second half, and, uh, you know, really hammered down defensively and sped up St. Francis Prep. We'll take another look here as um, St. Ray's gets ready in the half-court offense, and this is Kamari White, fresh off that 48 performance. Just kicking it over. St. Ray's gets into the half-court offense, and Anderson Diaz with the scoop. We are joined here at halftime by... St. Ray's head coach, George Lopez, here. And we were concerned there for a moment, George. We were like, what happens if it's a tie? Like, tie goes to the runner in baseball. Tie goes to the home team. But uh, you get that uh, last stop there and, uh, and, and a battle of two different quarters there. Obviously, they score a ton of points in the first quarter. Uh, you chipped away, and, and, and you have a lead at the half. Yeah, we just, we just have to do a better job defensively. You know, you know, part of our game plan was to slow them down. Um, but, you know, I feel like they're, they're playing at their pace, and we wanted to control tempo, and you know I thought we did a better job in the second the second quarter of doing that. Hopefully, we'll do a better job in the second half of controlling that. How do you specifically slow them down, defend better? Like, what are you going to tell your team in the locker room now? Just keep those guys in front. You know, too many times you had Veer driving down the middle. Like, you know, we just got to do a better job communicating. You know, one time we had Sacco who was wide open for three. I mean, you know, that's just lack of communication. You know, those breakdowns, those you know, simple things. You sat next to Oliver Antigua for for uh, many years on that St. Raymond's bench. Uh, he's on the other side of things here, joining us on the call. Maybe a little breakdown of what you've seen from Oliver on the call with us. I thought he did a tremendous job. You know, just getting a coach's perspective, <laughs> yeah. um, I thought that was pretty interesting. And uh, just to see him do that and, uh, you know, being able to talk about players, personnel, you know, different actions that teams are trying to run, you know, I think it's great. I think it's great for the audience. And, uh, you know, I think he has a future in broadcasting. Oh, we, might have, we might get George here as well uh, in, in the future. We don't want to even retire anytime soon. Long, long time. We've got plenty of years left Hopefully, here at St. Ray's. Yeah. George Lopez, thanks for joining us. We appreciate you. You got it. So at the half, St. Ray's up by two. You're watching it all right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching Varsity Media, New York's high school sports network. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. 
From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. Are you a local business looking for new and creative ways to promote your company? Varsity Media offers affordable rates that can get your message across to a demographic of 18 to 54 years of age. Our follower base across social media is over 50,000 strong and our viewership numbers per game are in the thousands. Don't blow your advertising budget on old staples like TV and radio media. Reach out to Varsity Media to get the best bang for your buck. My name is Grant Vermeer, a member of the Crown Refs community. My first year as a high school official, that's when I found out about the Crown Refs community. Having my military background, I love being a part of teams. I want to be a part of a group that has high standards, that holds each other accountable, but also supports and loves each other, and has a desire for everyone in the group to grow. If you're a young referee or someone who loves refereeing and wants to be a part of a group, this is an amazing community for you. I feel like I've gotten better as an official. I've had a community and friends and support through this process, which can otherwise be a little bit lonely as you're on the road a lot. The culture is amazing in here. Make sure Come check it out. Did you just have the best athletic year of your life? And now you want to show it off to college coaches? Well, let Varsity Media help you. Varsity Media's college recruiting videos show off your unique skills to help you land a spot on the team of your dream school. We'll provide music, spot shadow effects, and a link to send to your next coach. Contact us today for more information. Don't rely on word of mouth or cold emails. Let Varsity Media help you take your game to the next level. Brian Harrington is the owner and head performance coach of Harrington Sports Performance and Transform Fitness and Recovery located in Tuckahoe, New York. Currently, Brian and his team have been contracted by multiple schools and for over the past 15 years to provide high-level strength and conditioning and performance training to their athletes. Brian works with basketball players from NYC's highest level talent down to the grassroots level. You can message him on his social media at Harrington underscore performance and use promo code HSP1 in the message details for a discount on an initial evaluation. Hey sports fans, did you know Varsity Media live stream broadcasts get viewed by college coaches nationwide? Through our announcer's storytelling and insight on your athletes, we can help your players get an edge on college recruiting. Find out how by reaching out to Varsity Media today, 516-403-2050, or email ben at varsitymedia.net. High school sports fans, are you following Varsity Media on our YouTube channel? For the best coverage of New York high school sports, make sure you head to youtube.com slash varsity media. Three easy steps. First, hit that like button, and then be sure to subscribe. And finally, tap that yellow bell to be notified of all of our upcoming sportscasts. Thank you for following Varsity Media on YouTube. Varsity Media offers live streaming services for any sport. With human beings behind the camera, you can expect the proper coverage angles during each game. We offer customizable options such as live scoreboard, multiple cameras, instant replay, graphics, and even announcers. Find out how you can save $100 off a live stream package with Varsity Media by calling 516-403-2050 or email Ben at Varsity Media. Feel like your game film is too stagnant and not providing you with the insight that your coaches had hoped for? Varsity Media offers game film to help your coaches develop a game plan to execute on game day. Our current clients love the Varsity Media difference, which includes more insightful camera angles 
and a speedy upload process. Start building your championship team today with award-winning individuals at Varsity Media. You're watching Varsity Media, New York's high school sports network. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. Are you a local business looking for new and creative ways to promote your company? Varsity Media offers affordable rates that can get your message across to a demographic of 18 to 54 years of age. Our follower base across social media is over 50,000 strong and our viewership numbers per game are in the thousands. Don't blow your advertising budget on old staples like TV and radio media. Reach out to Varsity Media to get the best bang for your buck. Welcome back to the Raven's Nest here at St. Raymond's, one of the best gyms, I believe, in the Catholic League. Dylan Butler, John Perez here with you. Uh, it is halftime, and it is a two-point lead for St. Ray's. It was uh, really a tale of two quarters to, uh, unfortunately, use the cliche, John, but it was 22-12 for St. Francis Prep after one, and then a 21-9 second quarter, gives the Ravens a two-point lead. Yeah, and St. Raymond did a better job defending, speeding up the game in the second quarter. Not much to the liking of George Lopez, though, was still a little frustrated with the effort. But you know, St. Raymond's always going to be in it, uh, especially with the talent that they have. Uh, good job responding by, uh, by St. Francis Prep. Now it's a matter of how does Prep respond um, after they've been punched in the mouth. The Terriers, they got out hot. Osmato Sacco with 11 to lead all scorers. Troy Faison, eight points, all of his eight, though, in the first quarter. And Nolan Raymond had seven, but five were in the first quarter. For St. Ray's, balanced scoring. Kamari White led the way with nine. Ty Turnage with eight. Six for Cherry. And Stores and Diaz with four apiece. Good job distributing. Uh, and, and that's what St. Raymond could do so well, especially when you got Turnage leading the break but you know we didn't see a lot of turnage either went to the locker room wait in the second quarter I think he uh actually did blow a tire one of his shoes uh might have been scuffed up or whatever happened so now he's back out there uh for St. Ray's as well but yeah it's just a matter of setting up your teammates getting open shots and we'll see uh what happens with St. Ray's and how they adjust for the second half to try and pick up a win number uh 17 on the year yeah 17 on the year and there's a look at the St. Francis prep Huddle, there's Jimmy Lynch coming out. Seventh season for him, a 1999 graduate. Got his 100th win earlier this year against Bergen Catholic. So he's well on his way, right? I said, listen, uh, at the time, I said, you've only got, uh, what, 546 left to become the school's or tie. The <laughs> school's all-time record, of course, uh, held by the late, great Tim Leary. He said, they're not getting 46 years out of me, that's for sure. <laughs> so I think Tim Leary's record is safe right now. Michelle Tasako, guarded by Storrs, gets the shoulder lowered on the junior. Missed the shot, though. You know, and that's the math teacher in Jimmy Lynch as well, too. He's calculating how long it's going to take. And He's gotten to 100 pretty quickly, though. It's, yeah. it's, it's the resurgence for St. Francis Prep has been really, really impressive uh, under Jimmy Lynch's guidance. Uh, certainly, listen, it's a program that, uh, listen, I, as a grad, I could say it, right? It's, it's always been second best to the Christ the Kings and the Malloys and the Lachlans and even Zavarian uh, in Brooklyn, Queens, and uh, they've been the top dogs these last couple of years, these Terriers, or among the top dogs. Yeah, no, they've been in a position to be in a position tend to shoot now for Anthony, but yeah, he's done a good job building the program. Sacco, the rebound and the putback. George Lopez said Sacco by name when he spoke to us about getting in front of him, not wanting him to shoot threes. Well, that's what happens when you have him inside the arc. 
Turnage back in there. There's a lot of contact. And the foul was called on Anthony. Revere Anthony, foul number two. But yeah, listen, St. Francis Prep, back-to-back -back years in the semifinals, losing to another alum, Joe Lodes and Cardinal Hayes both times. And there's a good look at Ty Turnage. First free throw, back rim, no good. Junior, a host of offers. Bryant, Creighton, Fordham, Hofstra, Mississippi State, Norfolk State, URI, Robert Morris, Seton Hall, UAB among those. Michelle. Great job by Turnage to affect that shot, I thought, because Michelle didn't want to get the contact. Turnage had position, and that shot was short. This one was long. Rebound, though, by Stores. Inside, count it, and the foul for Eliza Cherry. That's tough luck for Sacco. Not sure how much contact there was, but certainly not enough to keep the end one attempt out. Did a good job on Stores, but even better job by Cherry backing up. We'll take another look off the missed shot. Stores will put it up. Stores bumping into Sacco. I think Anthony had a tip in there as well. Yeah, not much you can do for Sacco. Is good. Three point lead for the Ravens. Vera Anthony hands off to Faison. Kamari White with a hand in his face, saying hi. Michelle works off to Sacco screen, kicks it in the corner. Nice ball fake by Raymond to get an open three from that other corner. Here, Anthony's shot doesn't fall. Look at Raymond. And that aggressiveness certainly has to stem from Friday night. 100%. And you're building confidence too, Dylan. And St. Francis Prep knows what's at stake. They know how tough their schedule is the rest of the season. And they have to go out there and take it. That fifth spot in this starting five has been fluid this year. We saw Ethan Butler um, get that nod early in the season against Christ the King, and then we saw Nigel Moore get it, and now Nolan Raymond's getting the opportunity. And I like that from a personnel standpoint. Would you like to have the same starting five all year to add continuity? Yes, but what it also does is it galvanizes your bench, knowing that if you put it together in practice and then in games, Jimmy Lynch is going to call on you um, when the time ne is needed. And he's come up with big plays. Stores comes up with a lot of them, and he'll go to the foul line. Foul on Raymond, his second. Yeah, I think it's a relief for Stores. He's been trying to draw contact to get to the free throw line all afternoon and has not gotten the benefit of the whistle. But, you know, for St. Ray's, we're still looking for um, Stores to take over, and perhaps this is the quarter where he does so. Yeah, Good job five, the basket. five points now, make it six. As Brandon knocks down both of his free throws. And the Ravens at least momentarily showed a full court look, or at least they'll defend. Now look at Kamari White coming again. The, uh, the uh, idea is to speed up the Terriers. Here's Saka, oh, the lefty finish inside. Love that sky hook as well, and use your offhand. That's how you develop into a full player. 15 for Big O. Stores backs his man down, knocks down the jumper. And maybe you're right, maybe he is starting to heat up. Here's Sacco. Pumps the brakes. You know me, I love a head fake. That's what sold it. And Sacco uh, could have dunked it. Get some separation, cans it. Ty Turnage for three. 11 for the junior point guard. Now Faison with Veer Anthony on the bench with his three fouls. Sacco pops out, front rim. Rebound goes to Cherry. And here comes Turnage into the lane. Turnage, get out of here, says Sacco. Diaz tracks down the loose ball. Nice move by Diaz. Fade away. No good. His own rebound again. 
And he gets the finish at the hoop. Timeout, St. Francis Prep. Yeah, and Lynch taking a full timeout. St. Francis Prep has got to do a better job boxing out there. 418 left third quarter. Ravens, Ravens have a lead. You're watching it right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. We're watching Varsity Media, New York's premier high school sports network. Brian Harrington is the owner and head performance coach of Harrington Sports Performance and Transform Fitness and Recovery located in Tuckahoe, New York. Currently, Brian and his team have been contracted by multiple schools and for over the past 15 years to provide high-level strength and conditioning and performance training to their athletes. Brian works with basketball players from NYC's highest level talent down to the grassroots level. You can message him on his social media at Harrington underscore performance and use promo code HSP1 in the message details for a discount on an initial evaluation. Back here at St. Ray's, there's a look at the Ravens huddle and what success St. Ray's has had over the year, whether it's Gary DeCesar, Oliver Antigua, George Lopez, seven intersectional championships for these Ravens, two Federation titles as well. Among the more storied programs in a league that uh, is one of the best in the country. 100%. But the one thing that I love about all these coaches across the league, and St. Ray's is no exception, it's been too long for the Ravens. And yep. they want to take that next step and finally capture a city title, something they haven't done in a while. Yeah, that last one, 2012, when they beat Holy Cross in the championship. The likes of Kerwin Okoro and Daniel Dingle and Shane Rector leading the way. Finish. Cherry got the strip and the finish inside. Good little layup there, embracing the oncoming traffic, and he scores. Oh, and Michelle called for the push-off. His you know, second for Anthony back in. And, you know, I know it's a physical game, but for Michelle, you got to just watch that offhand. The official's right next to you. It's an easy call. And after that hot start, St. Francis Prep potentially here could be trailing by double digits in this third quarter. Here's Anderson Diaz. Diaz lost it, got his own back though, and gets it inside. Could be a little chaotic for Diaz, but he does a good job staying with it. Isolated play for him, drives to the cup and gets the basket. You're right, now Ray's up 10. Eight for Diaz, Nolan Raymond kicks it to Faison. Good look for Faison, misses it, but Sacco tracks down the offensive rebound, lost it. Here comes Turnage, stripped but fouled. <laughs> Turnage, just for effect, heaves the ball towards the basket. We'll see if it'll go in, but St. Francis Prep, ice cold right now, nothing going their way, and how do you respond? You commit a foul, and that's not uh, what good teams do. St. Francis Prep knows that uh, they got to get that one back, and uh, just a tough lesson for Prep on that last sequence. First free throw is good. Take another look in transition, and yeah, that was Raymond, um, or excuse me, Nigel Moore putting his hands in the cookie jar. If Turnage was on the court last night at the Garden, that might have been a continuation in the NBA. Yeah. Ill-advised pass taken away by Cherry. That's an it's, interception anywhere. It's all Ravens right now as Turnage gets to the basket and a timeout called by St. Francis Prep. Good job by St. Raymond, really intensifying the game. And take another look as it's a run out. This is exactly what the Ravens wanted to do. Speed up the game, and who better than give the ball to than Ty Turnage, who's able to plop it in. We mentioned this is a late regular season matchup, and we take a look at the upcoming schedule for uh, these two teams, and... It's funny, right? We were here like a month or so ago. There are so many games to go down, and these games come thick and fast. Here's some of our games that we have for you on the Varsity Media Sports Network. We head to the Catholic League on Long Island for a couple games. St. Dom's, St. John the Baptist coming up next Tuesday. And then from Hofstra, Chaminade, and Holy Trinity. It is the appetizer. No, no, no. Don't, don't, don't. We don't have it. 
I know it's an appetizer, whatever's out there. Watch on Varsity Media. You won't want to miss Chaminade, who's coming off a 103-point performance. Good win over St. Mary's. And we'll get the Flyers, their last, uh, or our last three sportscasts there. <laughs> they play the Cougars, and they play St. Anthony's. All those games right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Maybe we get the entree, Dylan, out there, but we got to leave the audience wanting more. I was going to say that it's Cooper Flag and it's Long Island Lutheran. You don't have to sell me. Tim Doyle, former St. John's guy, has brought a fun two days. Speaking of which, wasn't fun for Duke last night. No, it was not. Here's Sacco. He's the only one right now in this, in this quarter who's consistently scored. Anthony misses it inside. Michelle fakes the three, the kick out. Oh, nice block by White. Another cross-court ill-advised pass. And there's another one on the other side as Turnage turned it over. Faison attacks the basket, and he's fouled. Fouled by White. It is his second. Well, one of the points of emphasis Lopez said was, you can't let Sacco shoot threes. Well, then White said, okay, no problem. I'll get up in his grill. <laughs> I got you, coach. Anthony ahead to Michelle. Michelle and Raymond are the senior leaders on this team. Here is Raymond from the corner. Off the mark. And the big man, Colin Pang, unable to corral that rebound. So... They have a shot clock reset and St. Francis prep ball underneath. Faison attacks and he is fouled as well. This one on Sherry. His second in the team's third. Rinse and repeat. St. Francis Prep needs to score in the worst way. Try to find the open man, knock down a jumper, and you got to defend on the other end. And if you could build momentum going into the fourth quarter, you make it anyone's game. And we have not seen the St. Francis Prep of the first quarter uh, since then. No, they've not matched that production in either the second and third quarters combined. Michelle, an open three. Off the mark. Beer Anthony. Trying to grab it from stores. Some contact on the baseline, and it goes out. That was Quan Johnson, the junior, driving. And the ball will stay with St. Raymond's. Good to see Johnson getting some minutes. You know, dealt with a knee injury last year, missed the JV season, and uh, a good sub to have off the bench for the Ravens. At the time, he was leading that JV team in scoring. Colin Pang getting down on the court. But it will be St. Francis prep ball. Yeah, just old school CHSAA basketball getting after it. And we should we should speak to the players because if you get what is it, a dollar for a charge? Or is it five? How much do you get for a charge? Or it's a draw charge. It's five dollars. If you get on the court chasing a loose ball, that should be worth something. You're right. Monetarily at least, right? Not trying to take more money out of George Lopez's pocket, but Faison misses a three. Well, he's told us on the record he'll pay the invoices. He's got no issues. Sacco turns, and he can't miss the bunny. He can't make the bunny as Turnage the other way. Stores. Drive. Stores. That's just a grown man move right there, and you've got the size advantage on Anthony. Not much that Michelle can do either. And Storrs, since the last time he was at the free throw line, starting to play more in the flow of the offense, but get himself involved, and he's able to, uh, he's trying to electrify himself. 55-39 the lead for St. Ray's, and it feels like it was only a minute ago they were down by 10. In the first quarter, Veer Anthony, he makes it. A much needed basket in the first of this game.
for Veer Anthony. Now a team that likes to push it. Perhaps the Ravens will slow things down here with uh, only a fraction of a second difference between shot and game. Actually, who am I kidding? Stores attacks it. Pang, the rebound and put back. That's the thing with St. Ray's. They're always looking to score. It doesn't matter uh, the time and score. They just want to get a bucket. Faison for three in the corner. His first points, John, since the first quarter. Turnage, good if it goes. It goes! Ty Turnage! Good sense of how much time was winding down as Turnage. I'm sure he practiced this every day, and Turnage able to beat the buzzer. Weaves past a few defenders. Money. It has been that kind of second and third quarter for the Ravens. They lead 60 to 44 going into the final eight of regulation. We'll have it for you right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Hey, it's Isaiah Hartenstein. You're watching Varsity Media. Hey, sports fans. Did you know Varsity Media live stream broadcasts get viewed by college coaches nationwide? Through our announcer storytelling and insight on your athletes, we can help your players get an edge on college recruiting. Find out how by reaching out to Varsity Media today, 516-403-2050, or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Ty Turnage on that buzzer beating three. Uh, has the Ravens leading 60-44 to 44 at the break. And Turnage has certainly heated up in this third quarter, part of uh, a lot of heat from these Ravens. And it just goes to show um, that St. Ray's been able to put it together. But there's Turnage again, uh, very pretty. You're going to be seeing that on the social media interwebs uh, throughout the <laughs> next couple of days. And uh, I think that's just a microcosm of what the second and third quarter has been for St. Ray is a team that's able to control their own tempo, their face guarding, and doing a better job defensively. It's parlayed into their offense and now enjoying a 16-point lead with eight minutes to go in regulation. Yeah, we've been treated to some close ones, and if this is to also be a close one, St. Francis Prep's got to pick it up in a big way in this fourth quarter. Got to start defensively now, and there it is. And it does start with that strip from Veer Anthony ahead of the field, and he'll get the layup. Jimmy Lynch already employing the press. Not a lot of time left, even though you have a full quarter. Now the thing is, if you break the press, this happens for the Ravens. As a foul is called, White will go to the line. A team that likes to speed it up can continue <laughs> to speed it up if you're unable to get that stop in the backcourt. We'll take another look, and you know what? St. Ray's has done a good job at the free throw line, but they have not been excellent at the free throw line. Take your chances and make St. Ray's knock down those free throws as White's off on the first one. So it's not the worst in the world if you do commit a foul and have to force Ray's to knock down those freebies. St. Ray's scored 27 points in that third quarter, and that's where that separation happened for them as White looks down to knock down the second. He does just that. Double figures now for White and likely I would imagine is uh, going to be among those in contention if not the guy who will be the player of the week by the Catholic League in the double A. After what does he now have 58 points over the course of two games this weekend. Well I think when you score 66 points in two games you have to be the favorite. See, I wasn't, that's that's the thing. See, I, you, you've got that math going like Jimmy Lynch. I'm not that math guy. I, I, you got to bring your abacus. Here's Diaz with a miss. Bobbles around between Pang and Faison and goes out of bounds, staying with the Ravens. St. Ray is outscoring St. Francis Prep 27 to 13 in that third quarter. Ball out of bounds, Richie Katz gets a little bit of help. There's Quan Johnson to the hot hand. Doubled, 
Ty Turnage, his dad and Holy Cross head coach, Billy, told him to be aggressive. There's a tip, and it stays with St. Ray's as Sacco. Of their 13 points scored in the third quarter, six came from Sacco. He's got 17, but right now he's second in terms of the leading scores overall to Ty Turnage's 18. This one goes to St. Francis Prep. Well, they're going to need him to contribute defensively, and they're going to try and stop the Ravens. And Did not have an influence on that last uh, sequence for St. Francis Prep defensively, but they get the stop regardless. Let's see what's drawn up here. Sacco. Faison. Nolan Raymond. Off the mark. Here comes White in transition. White somehow got his way to the basket. What an acrobatic move. And Sacco thought he was going to go high. And when they go high, White goes low, gets the hoop. White scored a lot more points in varsity basketball than I ever had as Pang gets that rebound. I thought he should have pulled up, considering the traffic, but who am I to say that? Three off the mark, and Diaz. He's done all of the little things today. Really impressive performance to me by the freshman Anderson Diaz. Yeah, he's been an X factor, and when you're getting that contribution out of a freshman, it only goes to show the ceiling that he's got the remaining three years. Turnage, back rim, no good. Veer Anthony, the outlet, quickly to Sacco. And how about that, Ty Turnage stopping the freight train from getting to the basket and making him earn it from the foul line. Yeah, good job getting back on defense. And Richie Katz calling the foul there. He thought he saw some contact. Sacco heads to the free throw line, but there's no give up in Ty Turnage's game. Back to Diaz, it was early on he got a few stops, right? I think it was three defensive possessions where he might have stopped as you see the replay again. Good hustle by Turnage. Sacco makes the first, looking for the second now. Back rim, loose ball, of course. Anderson Diaz comes away with it. His ears have to be red. And those were talking about him, and George Lopez calls a timeout. See the frustration for St. Francis Prep for St. Ray's. Lopez now five and a half minutes away from picking up their next victory. It'll be number 17. Think about it, they lost 16 a year ago. Yeah, tremendous turnaround for the Ravens. One of those losses was at St. Francis Prep, and we mentioned it uh, before. The Terriers with a home win will bring you back to St. Francis Prep. Uh, for this one, see the number, the jerseys are different in this one, and uh, St. Francis Prep got out to an early lead. There's Turnage, pretty spin move to the basket, oh, but this one was all St. Ray's. There's Josh Pascarelli knocking it down from three-point range. Ravens tried to get their way back into it, uh, but it was all St. Francis Prep in this one. Terriers rolling as Pascarelli attacks the rim for two more. And they win this one, 77 to 63. On the day, Pascarelli, Pascarelli, excuse me, with a big performance, as we just showed you. Some of those highlights. 20 points, Vera Anthony with 15, Tyler Michelle. 15 points, six assists, four rebounds. And it was, as we've seen so often, Turnage and Stores leading the way for the Ravens as a foul called on Sacco as Cherry will go to the line. Turnage had 16 in that loss. Uh, Stores had 15. What a joy it was to watch Pascarelli play uh, for St. Francis Prep. And I think he just embodied what the Catholic League is as a whole. Yes, there's been five stars, NBA picks and all that, and not knocking uh, where he's playing basketball now, but show true grit, uh, has enough to translate it to the next level and play at a Division One school and really left it all out on the floor, uh, a consummate leader on and off the floor. Uh, he was a lot of fun for St. Francis Prep to watch. Yeah, tremendous three-point shooter. Michelle, short on his 
three attempt. And here's White in transition. No good, Cherry. Cherry picks the rebound and 20 point lead for the Ravens. That was sweet, wasn't it? <laughs> Faison misses the bunny inside. It's all St. Ray's right now. Turnage to Stores. Good look. Baseline finish. Cherry again. Yeah, that's it. St. Raymond starting to take the air out of St. Francis Prep's tire. And Matt Rubin called the foul. It's on Turnage, his third. I think Vera Anthony is a little shaken up, uh, holding his back, upper back. Yeah, I mean, again, the contact that he draws, he's always on the court. Uh, but that is the way that he plays all the time, all effort. Sacco fouls inside. And Turnage just picked up his fourth. Well, it just shows that O'Quait and Turnage's game, and I've liked every one of his fouls, too. Hasn't committed a silly foul. It's been with a purpose, and good basketball play. Sako's first is good. And Turnage trying to plead his case to Steve Salustio, who guides him to the bench, <laughs> gently helping him get there. Well, you know what? It's a professional interaction between the two. Um, it's obviously not going to overturn the call, but that's how you build credibility with the officials who are, you know, trying to get it right as well. And uh, I think this is a veteran crew, does a good job. And you want to have an open c communication with the players and let them know why uh, you're calling a foul or not in some cases. Yeah, Richie Katz, Steve Salustio, and Matt Rubin, three-man crew today at St. Ray's. And St. Raymond's ball now. 20 point lead. St. Francis hasn't had a game like this since their first encounter against Christ the King. When it was CK's league opener, you go back to early December, you don't usually play those kind of games that early, but the schedule just kind of broke the way it did and uh, St. Francis Prep took one on the chin there at home to CK, a 73-55 loss, a closer game the second time, but uh, they've not been in this kind of deficit really since that point. No, and it just goes to show how good basketball they've been playing and give credit to St. Ray's. They figured out St. Francis Prep. This is a blueprint that uh, Nazareth can use, Holy Cross and the remaining opponents for St. Francis Prep in the regular season and um, another game that Prep can learn from. Yeah, when we get a break, we'll show you the upcoming schedule for St. Francis Prep. It is not for the faint of heart. Good tr uh, steal there by Faison. Attacks it hard. Fouled by Stores and Stores, a bit gimpy. Yeah, not sure if he twisted his knee or not, but he's going right to the bench. And that's the last thing that George Lopez needs to see from any of his players in a in a game where you're so comfortably ahead. Yeah, it's just a matter of getting out in one piece and holding that right foot on the bench. So Faison, 11 on the game. In a hot first quarter, perhaps the hottest of the Terriers had eight. And he's only scored three since. Goes one of two. And again, St. Francis Prep out of necessity picking up full court. Good pass ahead and a layup by White. It was Hassan Cisse who made the pass. And White finish at the rim. You know, really like this opportunity for the super subs for St. Ray's. Uh, obviously, Store is a little shaken up. Uh, Turnage has uh, four fouls, so you get a chance to dig into that bench and see what this offense is like because when the playoffs come around, Dylan, you never know what the circumstances are, and you want to have a personnel out there that's been battle-tested against a very good team like St. Francis Prep. To the hard way for... Sacco as timeout 
is called by St. Francis Prep, which gives us an opportunity, John Perret, to look at the upcoming schedule for both of these teams. First for the Terriers, and ouch. You lost at home to Nazareth. Nazareth just beat Christ the King. Right now, they're on top of the Brooklyn Queens diocesan standings, and you have to go to Brooklyn to take on Nazareth, and then you're home for the Battle of the Boulevard against Holy Cross. That was a two-point game the first time. And then you go to Stepanak, where it feels like everybody loses by 20, 30 points. Yeah, I think tickets have already sold out to that game. Um, they should probably hold it at the county center. But, you know, Nazareth apparently um, has a new rival in Christ the King, which has just been blowing up the social media, which is interesting that you could have it after, what, two games uh, your first year up in this league? But either way. Rick Patino says that St. John's UConn isn't a rivalry. They've been playing a lot longer than Nazareth <laughs> Christ the King. Right. Uh, that is for sure. Let's show you the St. Ray's. <laughs> Upcoming schedule and uh, a little uh, bit more favorable, if you will. They go to a struggling Mount St. Michael, and then they've, they're home for Nazareth. That should be a fun one, certainly. And then they go to Scanlon uh, to close out the regular season. But again, it feels like their spot is certainly solidified. Number two in the Archdiocese. They lost both regular season games to Stepanek, a close game we had here on the Varsity Media Sports Network at the Ravens Nest, a not-so-close game up in White Plains. Maybe a round three. Maybe in the Archdiocese Championship, a game that we'll have on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Yeah, I don't see why not. I... Not knocking the other teams. It would just be a fun uh, rematch for the third time. Well, unlike you would call it, I guess, a three-horse race in the Brooklyn Queens, it's more of a two-horse race here in the Archdiocese between Stepanak and St. Ray's. And then you kind of throw in the wild card being... As, the, as wild of a wild card as there is in the Catholic League this year, which is Cardinal Hayes. 100%, because you don't know if Jamel Thomas is going to drop 34 and uh, whatever it was. They're just an interesting team to watch. Raymonds gets the finish inside. He's got 11. And ahead of the field is Cisse. Oh, rims around. No good. And then he gets the double jeopardy there because he misses the, the layup. And then the sophomore gets called for the foul. Yeah, it's just got to be frustrating in what is an otherwise um, good victory uh, formation for St. Ray's. The game's not over yet, but uh, St. Ray's has put in a winning effort over the last three quarters and um, really showing why they are one of the top teams in New York City. 25 now for Osman Asako. Second rims around, no good. Sako's already got himself his first couple offers. Bryant and LIU, the early suitors. And he continues on his trajectory. We expect many more. Well, if he can hit his threes, he's already got his size. And the reason to believe Power Fives won't come knocking at the door or sending emails or carrier pigeon with those offers. Timeout called by St. Ray's with Diaz under duress. You got Elijah Cherry hobbling on the St. Ray's bench. We get a shot of that, number three in white. Uh, St. Ray's just has to get out of this game alive. Yeah, in one yeah piece. they've got to be healthy here. and Maybe you get a little deeper on your bench, and there you see two starters. Cherry looks like he's holding that right knee. Calf. Calf, and uh, Storr is there as well. Of the two, Cherry certainly a lot more in pain. But we mentioned the Catholic playoffs, and we'll have it for you here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. We'll start things out with uh, a fun back-to-back. -back. We're going to have the St. Francis Prep for the Brooklyn Queens Championship. That'll be on a Friday night. Next day out at Mount St. Michael, the Archdiocese Championship, and then we'll pick things back up from the quarterfinals on. We'll bring you the uh, A and the B Championships, as well as, of course, the big one, the Double A Championship on that Sunday afternoon in the Bronx at Fordham. University, all the games right here. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Varsity Media. Kamari White to Pang, and there's Turnage. 
Quan Johnson back out to tie turnage. And you see the Terriers at every opportunity doubling the ball. And quick ball movement is what avoids that. Sacco, the rejection on the baseline. Terriers now out and running. Good D by turnage. Here comes Anderson. And Michelle had to foul, or else that was an easy two points for Anderson Diaz. Yeah, no, it was good defense on the other end by Turnage, and because of that, um, that allowed Fong to play well defensively uh, and get a rejection in there. Turnage had his hands in there, and then um, either way, good job there uh, by Turnage, who is playing like one of our players of the game. We'll keep an eye on uh, and interview the player of the game after the game. Inside, no good by White, and the Terriers will empty their bench. We expect George Lopez here. Great respect between the two coaches in, in our conversations leading up to this one yesterday. Uh, both remarked about the other and how good a coach the other is. And, and it just shows it's, it's sort of a, like a fraternity. Uh, these jobs are few and far between at these schools. And, and they're coveted. Yep. Usually you get it and, and, and you're sticking around for a while. We go corner, that's Connor Griffin. Welcome to the game, Connor Griffin. You know, it's been a tough year for Griffin. The junior out of Whitestone had a knee injury, then was sick when he was healthy. Uh, good to see him knock down a three. It's a timeout by St. Ray's. We'll take it with them as well. Ravens lead this one 73-60. Watching on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Varsity Media offers live streaming services for any sport. With human beings behind the camera, you can expect the proper coverage angles during each game. We offer customizable options such as live scoreboard, multiple cameras, instant replay, graphics, and even announcers. Find out how you can save $100 off a live stream package with Varsity Media by calling 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Back at the Ravens' nest, Dylan Butler, John Perez, the entire Varsity Media crew, 13-point lead for St. Ray's with a minute 18 left. In this one, St. Ray's well on their way to a 17-3 and record, 9-2 and in league play. That's exactly uh, what George Lopez had in mind when he was going through last year uh, and the tough uh, times that St. Raymond's had. He knew that he was playing for this year and had them go through the process, and now it's in full bloom. Here's Turnage, attacks the rim, fouled on his way there, a foul was on Joseph Nunez, the sophomore from Fresh Meadows. And Turnage will go to the line to shoot two. 18 points on the day for Ty Turnage. Missed the first. Well, and this should be his last uh, attempt of the game. George Lopez has a sub at the table. He's got 19. <laughs> And he is to the bench. A great job by Ty Turnage. Replaced by Isaiah Gonzalez, the utility guy. The junior enters the game. Gio Moran hands off. That's Joe Nunez. Tough jumper, and Nunez will get himself to the line. Love the aggressiveness there by Nunez, only a sophomore, and uh, Jimmy Lynch says he's an athletic freak. It's just been a matter of uh, playing time and everybody getting the appropriate amount of minutes, but good building block is Nunez. First free throw, no good. Nunez from Fresh Meadows. I'm, I'm a little bit jealous of that. I had to take an hour. My commute from Jackson Heights when I went to St. Francis Prep was an hour long. This guy just rolls out of bed, walks out around the block, and he's there. I like athletes that live near their high school. 
Here's Diaz. <laughs> it's, it's a Gonzalez. Back to Diaz. And a foul was called before that pass. So we back to the drawing board for St. Francis Prep and I don't know if you're a glass half full guy or you're like, you know, maybe we needed to take one on the chin here late in the regular season and maybe reassess and, and go back to the drawing board and, and use it. Well, I think coaches are always looking for an excuse to dig into their team and whether it's express it emotionally or make them practice harder or find another way to motivate them, yes. Uh, as a team, though, you never want to lose. Uh, and as an athlete uh, and players, you always want to be competitive. So, you know, for Jimmy Lynch, yeah, it's back to the drawing board. You look at the tape, and then you try and improve upon that and try and make a deep playoff run. And you could look, if you look in the bench right now, he head and towel is Veer Anthony. You would think this is a playoff game, but you want that. You want that feeling from your players, certainly, because uh, it means they're, they're invested. No, 100%. And St. Ray's has played as if this was a playoff game today in the last three quarters, and they'll get the win today. Nunez tracks down the rebound. Bounce pass stolen away. Here comes Isaiah Gonzalez. Doubled. Pang. And they will not take the last shot. There was a hope that Amari Constantine would get that look. He did not. But what a game for St. Ray's. A 74 to 60 win. The Harrington Performance Post Game Show is coming up right after this on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching Varsity Media, New York's high school sports network. Brian Harrington is the owner and head performance coach of Harrington Sports Performance and Transform Fitness and Recovery located in Tuckahoe, New York. Currently, Brian and his team have been contracted by multiple schools and for over the past 15 years to provide high-level strength and conditioning and performance training to their athletes. Brian works with basketball players from NYC's highest level talent down to the grassroots level. You can message him on his social media at Harrington underscore performance and use promo code HSP1 in the message details for a discount on an initial evaluation. Are you a local business looking for new and creative ways to promote your company? Varsity Media offers affordable rates that can get your message across to a demographic of 18 to 54 years of age. Our follower base across social media is over 50,000 strong and our viewership numbers per game are in the thousands. Don't blow your advertising budget on old staples like TV and radio media. Reach out to Varsity Media to get the best bang for your buck. We welcome back to the Ravens' nest. 74-60, the win for St. Ray's. It's now time for the Harrington Performance Postgame Show. With over 15 years of experience training the top basketball players in New York City, improve your game with Brian Harrington and use the promo code HSP1 when you DM Harrington underscore performance to get a discount on your initial evaluation. Join now as part of the Harrington Performance Post Game Show by Ty Turnage, our player of the game. Big game for Ty, 19 points and a, and a big home win. Ty, we were talking about how close these teams seem to be coming in, and you guys took one on the chin in that first quarter, but from that point on, man, uh, you, you guys took control of the game and never let it uh, go back to St. Francis Prep. Right, we preach defense, so that's all we work on in practice. We try and get better every day at that because we had, we had a rough January, but now we're trying, we trying to get ready for that home stretch in March. What was the turning point for you guys in the season where, and I listen, you got you only have three losses, 17 <laughs> wins now too, but um, to where you guys really started to round into form. Was there a moment? Was there a practice? What has led to this resurgence for you guys? Uh, that practice after we lost to Stepanak, at Stepanak, it was, it was just a reset. Like we all, we all locked back in. We knew it was going to be a rough, a rough stretch after that, and we had to lock in so we could secure second place. This win today, who does it mean more to you or, or your dad? Because he's obviously, he's here, he said, he's wearing two hats today. He's, he's scouting, he's, he's your dad as well. And uh, he said, I hope the Ravens win, man. And, and, and he did, and he, he obviously is scouting because St. Francis Prep is, 
uh, coming up on on uh, on Friday. Yeah, I think it helped both of us because we just secured <laughs> second place, and now he has a chance to scout and try to beat them himself. I have to ask one question. Uh, that buzzer beater, did you know it was good? Yeah, I definitely knew it was good. I felt it. Is that something that you practice every day? or oh, no, Okay. No. Yeah, I was going to say 19 points. That, that, that had to be the sweetest of, of those 19, I'd imagine. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ty, man, you guys are, are, are cooking certainly here, and, and I imagine you're pretty excited about, uh, you know, you got a few more regular season games to, to finish things up, and uh, you got to like your chances going forward in, in the rest of the season. Right. All right. Ty Turnage, congratulations on a great game, and uh, best of luck going forward Thank as you. well. Thank you. So that's Ty Turnage, our player of the game. And a great one from him as well. Bound scoring uh, as well. Listen, Ty Turnage led the way for the Ravens, but then you also get 17 points from Elijah Cherry, 16 from Kamari White, and 12 through three quarters for Brandon Stores. That's certainly a, a winning recipe. Uh, it's a winning recipe. They knew how important this game was. Start to be like a playoff game. Here's uh, that Ty Turnage buzzer beater. Uh, he doesn't practice it. I don't believe him. Look how smooth he was there, too, right? right? Like... He's been there before, <laughs> that, is, that is for sure. Uh, and it's a nice win for the Ravens. Again, they improve now to 17-3, and 9-2. And, and as you heard from Ty, they've locked up the number two seed in the Archdiocese playoffs. So uh, if those seedings hold true to form, we should have a fun Archdiocese championship game at Mount St. Michael between Stepanak and St. Ray's. It's going to be a lot of fun, especially that turning point being after the second Stepanak loss. St. Ray's has revenge on their mind and title hopes indeed. And St. Francis Prep looking to bounce back as well. They're now 14-7, and 9-4. and four. So that'll do it here from the Castle Hill section of the Bronx. I want to thank the entire Varsity Media crew. Of course, our executive producer, Van Turchin. Our technical director, Chris Sweeney. For Travis DeLuise, Ron Pierre, my broadcast partner, John Perez, Dylan Butler, thanking you for joining us from the Ravens Nest. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Varsity Media Sports Network.